Hey guys, I got some requests to make a tutorial about the system monitor that I have in the left part of my desktop. Here it is. The program's name is Conkey. On Debian, Linux Mint and Ubuntu you can install it with this command. The link to the command for Arch Linux and Manjaro you can find in the description below. Conkey is a very powerful tool. You can display almost any system or even external information from the internet with it in real time. All you need to do is to configure it. When you launch Conkey for the first time, you can see that the default configuration is very simple. You can export it to a text file with this command. I'm going to share my config file. I'll put the link in the description. Let's download it and put it onto the desktop. It's a bit more complex than the default one, but will provide much more information. You have to create a directory named Conkey in your home config directory. Run this command in the terminal. Then copy the config file into that directory. If you use the file on your computer right now, some of the elements won't work. You need to manually adjust it to match your hardware configuration. I'm going to show you how to do that. Open the config file in your favorite text editor. I'm going to use Genie. If you don't see .config directory, enable the option Show Hidden Files in your file manager. Let's set the file type to None so we won't get distracted by the highlighting. The first section contains some general settings. For example, with update interval, you can set how often Conkey will refresh its content. The value is in seconds. 0.3 should be enough, that's approximately 3 times per second, but you can adjust the setting. By the way, if you're using a laptop, you can reduce the update interval when running on battery power with update interval on battery parameter. Total run times gives you the number of updates before the program shuts itself down. It can be useful if you only want to run it some time after you turn on your computer. So with update interval 0.3 and total run times 100, Conkey will be running only the first 30 seconds after it starts. Zero makes Conkey run forever. Here you can set the default colors for fonts and graphics. I have default color gray and default outline color white. Another important parameter is alignment. I prefer bottom left corner, but there are several other options available. Note the underscores in the value names. Gap X and Gap Y let you control how far from screen borders Conkey can display its window. So if I increase the parameter value, Conkey goes further from the edge. The next several sections manage what data is being displayed by the program. Throughout the sections you can see tags that encode the font and color of text or elements. You can play with those values to get the look that you would like. For example, you can increase the font size or change the color. Note that the colors can be set with their names or RGB hexadecimal values. Genie has a tool for choosing colors, but you can use other apps, for example GIMP, or visit my website, neoncipher.net slash v slash colors. Along with hex triplets, the page also has color names. Don't forget to put a hashtag symbol before the hexadecimal code. The first line is just simple text. You can type in whatever you want. I put my nickname. The next line shows the information about your kernel and architecture. The next two lines are today's date and time. You can change, for instance, the time representation to the 12 hour format. To find out the details, run man strf time in the terminal. Those letters define the format. The next code is for the time that is passed since the last system restart. The next section is about network connections. Line 2 has a very important parameter that you will have to change. It's the internal system name of your network adapter. To find out what devices are available on your system, type this command in your terminal. You'll need administrative rights for that. If the previous command didn't work for you, there is an alternative that can also show the names. I covered the part of my screen because the command also reveals current IP and MAC addresses. The names should be listed on the left side of the output. You can have two or even three names, for example one for your wired connection and one for the wireless adapter. Choose the device that you're going to monitor. After you got the right name, you will need to paste it several times in proper places of this text because every network parameter has to include that name. You can do it manually or you can use your text editor's find and replace feature. The name that is used in this example is ENP1S0, so I will replace every copy with my name. Boom, 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 that's it. 
The network part allows you to display the current download and upload speeds, as well as the total amount of downloaded and uploaded data. This part can be useful and help you to detect malware on your computer. If you don't have any apps running, but can see some suspicious internet activity going on, there is a chance that you have a Trojan that downloads or uploads something. Note that tiny bits of data transfer during system's idle state is normal. Usually a computer communicates to the router from time to time. Also, if you have something like a weather widget, it communicates to the weather server to check for updates. The next section is about processor cores. The main thing to adjust here is how many you have. You can get the number of available cores on your system by running this command. For every core, you will need two lines of code that looks like this. The only change is the number that you will have to enter three times for each core. I have four cores on this machine. If you have less, you can just erase the lines that you don't need. And if you have more, you will have to add the corresponding number of new lines. For example, for the fifth core, I would copy these two lines and change four to five four times. Here, here, and here. Do the same for more cores. This part can show you not only how busy each core at the moment, but also the current frequency. The section can be very useful to detect problems in your system. For example, if you have some app opened and it doesn't do anything but loads one or more cores at the 100% level, there is definitely something wrong with it. The next section has information about memory. It shows how much RAM you have and how much is currently being used. There is nothing to change here except font and colors if you want. The next part is about hard disk drive or SSD. The first line shows total available space and currently used space. In this example, Conky monitors the home directory, but you can put in here any directory you want. You can even monitor several directories at the same time. Just copy these two lines and replace home with the directory you want. I will put TMP for example. The next line shows the total number of bytes both read and written to the hard drive in real time. The two graphs below show separate information for reading and writing. The next line is about swap file or partition. The first number is the amount currently in use. Usually this number is zero unless you ran out of RAM. The second number shows the swap file or partition size. And the third number with the associated bar shows what percent of swap space is being used. The next line shows a very interesting parameter called entropy. Its value should be important for people who use encryption. In short, it's an indicator of your computer's ability to generate truly random numbers, which is crucial for unbreakable encryption. So the higher the first number, the better. Usually entropy is very low right after you turn on your computer. As it gets random data from mouse movements, keyboard strokes, internet activity, the value goes up. The second number shows the maximum value and the bar shows the percentage. The next section uses hardware built-in sensors to give you some information about your computer's temperature. This part is the most confusing in the whole configuration file. I'll try to explain it as best as I can, but if you'll have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. The number of those sensors depends on your motherboard and the processor. You can find out how many sensors you have by running this command in the terminal. So here I have four sensors. But that doesn't mean that all of them are temperature sensors. Some sensors provide other types of information, for example, voltage. It can be tricky to find out exactly what kind of information a sensor provides, and it goes way beyond this tutorial. So for simplicity, I suggest we concentrate our efforts on temperature only for right now. But how can we handle sensors if we don't know their type? We can simply ask everyone, what temperature is it? If the sensor replies with some value, then it means that it's a temperature sensor. These lines do exactly that. And if the sensor is silent, then Conky shows nothing in the corresponding field. Okay, if you thought that was the most confusing part, I have bad news for you. It was not. Here it is. On some computers, including this one, the numbers show real temperature. But on most computers, the values that those sensors return are not actual temperatures. For instance, you can have zero or even minus two. They are some numbers that can be converted to a real temperature using a formula. The problem is that the formula is different for different hardware models and in most cases that information is not available because most of the hardware in the market is proprietary. Manufacturers don't think they need to disclose it. You may ask me then, why are you even telling us about all this if we can't get the real temperature? Well, those numbers can still be very useful and potentially can save you a lot of money. I'll give you an example. 
Let's say you set up Gunky and every time you start your computer the value is minus 2. You use your computer for a year or two and then one day you notice that the value is not minus 2 as usual but let's say plus 20. Assuming that the room temperature is usual, that can only mean one thing, your computer got much hotter for some reason. If your computer is a laptop, of course the most probable reason is that the vent system got clogged up with dust or the thermal grease needs to be replaced if your computer is a desktop. So if you don't fix the problem, the computer is likely to break very soon and without Conky you wouldn't even know that the problem existed. Also using the data from the sensors, it's possible to test new parts. For example, if you bought a new cooler, you can compare the new sensor's data with the old one and tell if the new cooler works efficiently or not. Ok, back to our config file. The same way we edited the number of processor cores, we need to adjust our configuration to the number of sensors, except the first number should be zero. If you have many sensors and half of them are not for temperature, maybe it's best to position all those numbers on one line. Also note that the order of those sensors might be different on every computer restart. The next section gives us information about processes. The first line shows the total number of processes that are currently running. Then we have a list of top 4 processes sorted by the amount of memory that they use. Instead of memory usage, you can rank processes from highest to lowest in terms of CPU usage. To do that, change top mem to top and mem to CPU in every line. Woohoo! We finished editing the config file. Let's save it and launch Conkey from the terminal if you haven't done it yet to check if everything works correctly. Ok, now you can put it into your desktop environment's auto start list to make Conkey automatically start at system startup. If you want to stop Conkey, you will need to kill its process. Type in the terminal, locate Conkey and note its PID. Press K, then type in the PID and press enter two times. You can always find the most recent version of my Conkey config file and Debian wallpaper on my website. See you later.